Here we're going to look at a solution to a nice little number theory problem. So I'm not actually sure where this came from. I keep notes of problems that I find interesting. And I had this one written down somewhere, but I hadn't written where I found it. So I just found this in my notes and then I worked it out one day and I thought this was pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and look at what it says. So we want to find all natural numbers n and k. By natural numbers, I mean positive integers such that n plus one to the k minus one equals n factorial. So it goes without saying now that the general strategy involving these problems where you solve over the natural numbers or over the integers is you should probably only have between zero and three or four or possibly five solutions to this type of equation. Then you wanna find those by hand and those will be quite small. And then after that, you can probably show that there are no larger solutions. So in other words, after a certain point of a value of n or a value of k, there are no bigger solutions. So that's exactly what we'll do here. And some other hints go like this. So you'll maybe want to use Wilson's theorem. I at least used Wilson's theorem in my solution. You guys can post in the comments if you can find a solution without Wilson's theorem. And then you're going to want to find out something about K. And then finally, after you discover something about K, you'll finish this thing off with an inequality. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go with these hints. We'll come back with a solution. Hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look for a full solution. And we'll start by finding a couple explicit pairs, n and k, that are quite small that satisfy this equation. And then we will argue that there are no solutions after a certain value of n. So let's go ahead and do this by one value of n at a time. So let's look at this, the case when n equals one. So when n equals one, let's see what happens to this equation. So we have two to the k minus one equals one factorial. Good, but that means two to the k equals two, but that tells us that k equals one. So now we've got this very simple solution right here, which is n comma k are both equal to one. Great, now let's look when n equals two. So if n equals two, that's gonna turn this into three to the k minus one equals two factorial. But notice here, two factorial is equal to two, but that means we need three to the k to be equal to three, but that means that k is equal to one. So here we have n equals two, k equals one. So that's gonna be another solution. Now let's see if we can find any more. So let's look at n equals three. So if we have n equals three, we have four to the k minus one equals three factorial. So three factorial is equal to six. So this is equivalent to four to the k is equal to seven. So six plus one is seven. But there's obviously no solution here. Um, just easily, easy to see that the left-hand side is odd and the right-hand side is even. So no solution in this case. So let's maybe do one more n equals four. So let's see what we get for that. So we will have five to the k minus one equals four factorial. So four factorial is 24. So that tells us that we have five to the k equals 25, but that tells us that k equals two. And that gives us another solution. So our next solution here will be n equals four, k equals two. So we've got three solutions. And in fact, these are the only solutions, which is what we'll just prove in just a second. Let's maybe go ahead and play the game one more time. So if we have n equals five, so we're gonna have six to the k minus one equals five factorial. So notice that five factorial is equal to 120. So that means we have the equation six to the k equals 120. One, notice the right-hand side is odd, the left-hand side is even, so there's no solution there. And actually, you can probably guess that we're gonna need n to be even for there to be any sort of solution anyway. But we will actually claim and prove on the next board that these three solutions are our only solutions. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So we just determined we had solutions given by ordered pairs, one, one, two, one, and four, two. Now we wanna show that there are no other solutions. And we're gonna do that by proving this claim. There are no solutions with n bigger than or equal to five. And to prove this claim, we're gonna use Wilson's theorem. So let's go ahead and recall this. This is a slightly non-standard version of Wilson's theorem. Usually Wilson's theorem is just the forward direction, but the backward direction is also fairly simple to prove. That says that P is prime if and only if P minus one is congruent to minus one mod P. Now I've got a whole playlist on number theory. It was a little bit earlier in my YouTube video making, so the videos are not quite as good, but I urge you guys to check those out. Out, um, if you're interested. And I prove Wilson's theorem as well as the reverse direction in two different videos. Okay, so we're gonna use this, and we're gonna use this by taking a certain reduction of this equation modulo something in order to get something that looks like p minus one factorial into the mix. But we only have a single factorial here, n factorial. So if n factorial is gonna play the role of this p minus one factorial, then that means we need to reduce this equation modulo n plus one. So let's go ahead and do that. So maybe I've called this equation star. So we're gonna reduce equation star mod n plus one. So let's see what we get. And I'll actually work from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So that's gonna give me n factorial is congruent to, well, n plus one is congruent to zero mod n plus one. So we're just left with negative one mod n plus one. But now applying this reverse direction of Wilson's theorem, we see immediately that n plus one is a prime. But now if n plus one is prime, and I guess I should have put the assumption up here at the beginning that n was bigger than or equal to five, although it's built into the statement, so it's unclear if that was super necessary. So we've got n plus one is prime. So and n is bigger than or equal to five, that means n plus one is bigger than or equal to six. But if we've got a prime that is bigger than or equal to six, well obviously it's bigger than or equal to seven at that point, then that tells us that it's an odd prime because the only even prime is two. So in other words, we know that n plus two and n are both composite. So in, in fact, they're both even, but we're just gonna say that they're both composite for the time being, and then we might use the evenness as we move on. So n and, n plus two are composite, and in fact, they are even in composite, and that's because they are one different than an odd prime. Good. Now the next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and take this equation, and we're gonna factor it a little bit, and we're gonna factor it by thinking about this as x to the k minus one. So let's just go ahead and recall real quick that if we have x to the k minus one, we can factor that like x minus one and then x to the k minus one plus x to the k minus two plus all the way down to plus x plus one. So the dif difference of squares formula has this shape, the difference of cubes formula has this shape and so on and so forth. So we're gonna use this with x equals n plus one. So let's see what that gives us from the left-hand side of this equation. So we have n plus one to the k minus one. So that's gonna be n plus one minus one. So that's like our x minus one term. And then next, we're going to have n plus one to the k minus one plus n plus one to the k minus two all the way down, n plus one uh, plus one. Great. And then our equation is that this should be equal to n factorial. Great. But now what I wanna notice is that we can simplify this term right here. That's kind of obviously n, it's n plus one minus one. And then from there, what we can do is cancel both sides of the equation. So we can cancel an n from both sides of the equation, keeping in mind that n factorial is really n times n minus one factorial. Good, so let's go ahead and do that. That's gonna leave us with this equation. So we're going to have 
n plus one to the k minus one plus n plus one to the k minus two plus all the way down to n plus one plus one is equal to n minus one factorial. Now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is reduce this thing modulo n. And we're gonna use the fact that n is composite or the fact that n is even because this factorial, n minus one factorial will include two and it will include n over two. And that's because we have n bigger than or equal to five, but that means that n minus one is going to be strictly bigger than n over two. So let's just reiterate what's going on here. We have one times two times three, all the way up to somewhere in the middle, we'll have n over two, and then this ends at n minus one. And again, we're guaranteed that n over two is a natural number because we argued up here that n was even. But now notice that we can mash this two together with this n over two and we get n. So that makes this right hand side of the equation n times something. So I'll just put number there for n times something. But now we can reduce this thing modulo n and we get zero on the right hand side of the equation. So if we reduce this thing modulo n, notice we're gonna have one to the k minus one, that's just one plus one to the k minus two, all the way down plus one is congruent to zero mod n. But now we just need to count up how many ones we're adding together. And we're in fact adding together k ones. So what we've landed at is that k is a multiple of n. So we have k is congruent to zero mod n. That means k is a multiple of n. So n divides k or k equals m times n for some m, which is a natural number. Okay, so that's a good place to stop this board. I'll erase everything and start with the next step. So on the last board, we ended at this statement that n must divide k. So in other words, if we've got an ordered pair which represents a solution to this equation, n and k, k is a multiple of n. So in other words, k equals n times m for some natural number m. So k is either n, 2n, 3n, so on and so forth. Now we're gonna play with an inequality. So let's go ahead and start with this left-hand side. So we've got n plus one to the k minus one. So that's gonna be n plus one to the n to the m minus one. Good. But now we can remove this m if we put an inequality in here. So notice if we remove that m, we'll get n plus one to the n minus one. Good. Now, the next thing that I want to notice is that by the binomial expansion, we see that this is going to be bigger than or equal to n to the n plus n choose one times n to the n minus one plus n choose two times n to the um, n minus two plus all the way down to one minus one. Great, so I guess like I've taken all of the terms there so I can put an equality. Now what I'm gonna do is drop a bunch of those terms. So I wanna notice that one minus one is zero and then I can drop all of these terms right here and replace it with an inequality. So that is strictly bigger than n to the n. Good, but now n to the n is strictly bigger than n factorial. That's true if n is bigger than or equal to five. So that's really all that we need. So that means if we had started with a solution, we just showed that we did not have a solution. And so we formed a contradictory solution, which finishes us proving that there are no solutions for n bigger than or equal to five, and thus our only solutions are those three given up there. And that's a good place to stop.